This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo Yoga 11S. Finally, just like the ThinkPad Helix, we first saw this at CES in January of this year, and it took that long for it to arrive. Much like the Yoga 11 that, well, Lenovo came out with in the fall of last year, but this time we have full Intel inside, and it's full Windows, too. It's not Windows RT. But definitely the baby, baby brother or baby sister to the Yoga 13, and we're going to look at it now. So finally, just like we said for the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix, here it is, the Yoga 11S. Saw it, oh, gee, six months ago now at CES, and we were real excited about it. I know a lot of you were too, and so how do you feel about it six months later? It's still a really cool device. One thing that's going to hurt a bit is it's not running Intel Haswell. Fourth generation CPUs, we're still on third generation. The interesting thing is, though, this is running on the Y series CPU, which is an even lower dual voltage CPU that's good for tablets and for really small devices. I think Lenovo was trying to put that into the Helix originally too, but they ended up with going with full ULVs there. Here they could stick with the Y series CPU for a greater power saving. So basically you can run at two different voltages and it idles along and, and does moderate work at a lower voltage setting to save you some power. That's obviously important, uh, especially in the face of Haswell, because that brings us so much more battery life, often up 25% more. So we don't have Haswell here, but we do have the Y-Series CPU. And indeed, Lenovo claims that this little guy can run for six hours on a charge. And we've been finding that with average productivity use, some streaming video, brightness set at 50%, it's a pretty bright display, Wi-Fi on, that we've been getting about five hours out of it, which is decent for an 11.6-inch laptop. Of course, it's not your average laptop, just like the Yoga 13, which has been wildly popular. This thing does the flip, the twist, you name it, and you can use it just like a laptop like this. You can use it absolutely flattened. I've never understood how useful that would be, but you could do it if you wanted. Probably for some games, though, if you wanted to flatten the table, air hockey action there, that would work. And you can flip it like so for presentation mode. So you can show somebody else what's going on, or you can just, instead of using some kind of stand, obviously, you just want to interact with the tablet itself, maybe watch a movie, something like that. You can just prop it up so it's facing you, and you can control it with the touch screen right here. And you can use it completely flat as a tablet, which is pretty cool, and yes, it has an accelerometer, so you can use it in landscape or portrait orientation, but it is a 3.08 pound tablet, so this is not light like your Nexus 10 Android tablet or your iPad 3, certainly. It's got some weight to it. You're going to feel it if you're holding it up. You're probably going to prop it against your legs or against something if you're going to use it in tablet mode. Now, this is a touchscreen machine right here. This does not have an active digitizer with digital pen like the ThinkPad Helix. So for those of you who want the precise digital pen, this is not the product for you. You can use a capacitive stylus, but if you've tried those on an iPad or an Android product, you know that you don't get any palm rejection and they're not exactly very precise. Better than nothing, yes. This is a nice, bright IPS display with very good color saturation. You can see here we have this psycho, beautiful green grass going on here. and It's ultra vibrant, a pleasing screen to look at, 1366 by 768 resolution. So this is not a full HD machine. Lenovo positions this as to be a mid-range machine, not one of their highest end machines, so you're not going to get full HD. That said, I'm not really feeling too terribly sad about it. Everything looks nice and sharp. This runs Windows 8 64-bit. Obviously, right now we're in the traditional desktop, and you can get to your live tiles with the press of the physical button right here. Not capacitive, so that's good. It's not prone to accidental touching. Bottom here, we have the ventilation. And yes, just like with the Yoga 13, the keyboard faces out and against you. So if Lenovo sells a $29 slip cover right here, so you can slip that on so you don't have to feel the keys and you don't jam against them so much. And it's got little cutouts on it so you can actually use the controls on the device. That said, it's pretty sturdy. I haven't had any problem with the keys popping off. I am kind of careful with it, though. Here's our rectangular power connector, is what Lenovo has been using lately, fast charging, no complaints there. SD card slot, we have a blank And there. Our USB 2.0 port over here. And this is our rotation lock button, in case you don't want the screen to rotate. And on this side, USB 3.0 port, we have our full-size HDMI, 3.5 millimeter combo headphone jack, Speaker grills are on the sides over here. This is your volume control, so if you're using it in tablet mode, you have quick access to hardware volume controls. Of course, those are also available on the top row of the keyboard. 
And over here we have our power button, a little LED indicator to let you know when it's turned on. And this is our one key recovery button right here, recess so you don't press it by accident. So if you need assistance or recovery, you can press that. Now if we take a look at the keyboard, isn't this an interesting way to be able to present the keyboard, right? Here it is, Lenovo's AccuType keyboard, the smile-shaped keys. As always, excellent keyboard. 11.6 inch machines, usually not the greatest for typing on. Uh, really nice. I very much enjoyed typing on this. Very good accuracy rate. It didn't take me long to get adjusted to it. Nice key travel for a relatively fairly thin machine. There's a good amount of key movement there, a little bit of auditory feedback as well. The only drawback is it is not backlit. They only give you backlighting on their ThinkPad models and some of their higher ends like the Lenovo Y510 IdeaPad and Y500. So you're going to have to do without backlighting here. And we have their large trackpad here. It works fine. Lenovo generally has pretty good trackpads. The usual buttonless design. whole thing moves and it clicks. And this, it has a, it looks sort of like brushed metal at first, but it's really, it's a rubbery coating and it feels really cool. It's grippy, but not too sticky. And it makes it look quite nice too. Now the outside, it's just like the Yoga 11. You could get it with your choice of either gray or clementine orange. And this time around, clementine orange is available right away. With the Yoga 13, it took them a while before the orange version came out. You can order it right now with the orange if you want. And this is a very nice soft touch coating. It feels really good, particularly grippy on the bottom. It's nice. It's not going to just go sliding around the table. And we have these rubber feet here. For those of you who are adventurous, Lenovo really doesn't build this as being a user upgradable machine, but if you want to, there's a whole bunch of Torx screws here you can see that you can take apart and you can lift the keyboard out from the front to access your internals. In terms of what you get inside on this machine, you can get either a 1.4 gigahertz Core i5 Y series CPU again, and that's the base model that starts at 749. There's a Core i5 model that we have with a 1.5 gigahertz Y series CPU. And this is their kind of decent bundle model right here. For $999, you get the Core i5 1.5 gigahertz, which I'd recommend over the 1.4. You get 256 gig SSD instead of 128 gigs, and you get 8 gigs of RAM. It is also available in that base model with 4 gigs of RAM. And you can get a Core i7 as well. It's still that Y series CPU. Probably not as much of a benefit there because the Y series is not the sharpest knife in the drawer. That's not to say it's a total loser by any means. It's absolutely nothing like, say, the Intel Atom or the real low-powered AMD CPUs used in netbooks. It's just a little bit slower than the ULV Ultrabook CPUs because it's doing a lot more power conservation. In terms of performance, our model with the i5-3339Y, 1.5 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM, and a Samsung 256 gig SSD inside, it scored a 3837 on PC Mark 7. Now usually we see something around 4,500 for ULV Ultrabooks, so you can see you're, you're losing about 600 points of score there by going with the Y-Series CPU, but you are getting a cooler, quieter machine that has better battery life certainly than if they've gone with a full ULV for this guy, and really it doesn't get hot anywhere. And generally speaking, it's fairly quiet, too. Now, if you try to make it play a, a demanding 3D game, which is really not up to doing, to be honest, it's not that swift a machine, uh, but you could try running something like Civ 5 on it, and it, at native resolution it would run fine. You're going to hear those fans then. On 3D Mark 11, it scored a, on performance settings, 497, which is the 720p test setting, so about par for the course there. Usually we see 500 to 550 on ULV Ultrabooks. W Prime, we scored 32.05 seconds, and you can see our Windows Experience Index right here, 6.4 for processor, 7.2 for memory, so that tells us that's a very good score, that this has a dual channel memory configuration, at least with the 8 gig model, 4.7 for desktop graphics, I would like to see it a little higher, like 5.2, 5.5, but that's okay. 6.2 for gaming graphics, and 8.1 for the SSD drive, this is available with 128, 256 and 512 gig SSDs, once again. For Wi-Fi, you're getting Realtek Wi-Fi and Bluetooth here, and it's single band. That's something that Lenovo keeps doing with their yoga machines and their IT pad line in general. I mean, we really love them to move to dual band Wi-Fi at this point. It's just kind of silly right now when even a mid-range smartphone has dual band Wi-Fi, but that is what it is. So no Wi-Di there, and if you happen to attend a school that requires you have dual band Wi-Fi, well, this won't work unless you get an external USB Wi-Fi adapter to meet that requirement for your school. 
machine does not have NFC, nor does it have 3G or 4G integrated as an option. You can, of course, use your smartphone as a mobile hotspot with this, or use a MiFi, that kind of thing, if you need data connection anywhere. Again, Lenovo usually looks to including that with their ThinkPad line more than their IdeaPad range of products or their Yoga range of products. Overall, it feels solid, much like the very popular Yoga 13. It's durable, metal cage inside, rubbery finish outside, so it's grippy, and if you, you probably could tear the rubber finish eventually on this or wear a corner off, but it, honestly, I don't see any imminent problem with that happening right now. Attractive enough with Lenovo's book design. It's nice looking. I think it's really cool looking in orange, but that's just me. Sturdy, no flex. Stiff, nice big hinges over here. Nice stiff hinges, too. It doesn't wobble or anything like that when you poke at the screen. So really well done. And basically, if you like the Yoga 13 but want something even more portable, that's what this guy is. The charger is quite compact. This is actually the same one they use with the Helix and some other recent laptops. And it's got, again, that rectangular-style new connector that they use. Charges very quickly. No complaints with that. And then we'll test streaming video playback using our YouTube channel here. We're at 720p because that matches the display resolution of 1366 by 768 best. And we're going to give it a try. Hardware volume for the, for the operating system is at 60%. YouTube volume slider is at maximum. And in a minute after this, we'll switch to 1080p just to see how it looks and handles. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today, finally, we're going to look at the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix. This is a Windows convertible, as you can see here, two pieces, keyboard Looks great, dock. plays great. But this feels an awful lot like a real notebook when you dock it together, and we have an 11... We'll go up to 1080p. We have an 11.6-inch tablet here with digital pen support and full HD Looks display. just fine. We're look at it now. Fans are not so even turning finally, on yet. The Lenovo ThinkPad Helix is here, one of those Windows 8 Transformers... Air and really, this is a nice, sharp, bright IPS display. Again, I'm not really complaining too much about the resolution, but it's 1366 by 768. Well, it's easily viewable when you're on the Windows desktop, for example, here. Touch elements are easier to use. You can see the icons without having to do any kind of scaling. It all just works nicely. In terms of software that's preloaded, you have all the usual Windows Live tiles that are standard for the operating system, and Lenovo throws on a couple of things like their own companion software, Rara Music, Kindle, McAfee Security Advisor. Of course, any of these you don't want, you can remove. Encyclopedia Britannica, which is really basically a shortcut to the website right there. Your shortcut to trying out MS Office Trial or installing the full version if you have a key. Intel software and Filmon as well. And any of these that you don't want, you just do that and then you can choose to uninstall from there if you don't want them. As usual, this has a recovery partition, so you don't have all of that 256 gigs available to you. There's about 20 gigs that's taken up by recovery, but all of the rest is yours to use. So you can see here we have 184 gigs free, and we've put on about 5 gigs of our own software. So that gives you an idea of how much space you're getting on your 256 gig. And then we have a second little D drive here that has your backup for your applications and your drivers. Not too much there. So we have applications, but there's all your drivers in case you need them again. So all in all, great keyboard, nice sharp display, pretty bright, uh, pleasing colors on this. Very durable, very rugged kind of feel to it. So if you're looking for something highly portable, 11.6 inch, you think 13 inch is just too big for you, and you want a good keyboard experience, you want something durable, it's certainly a nice enough machine. Not perfect, no backlit keyboard, no do-bound Wi-Fi. That's our usual complaint with the Yoga Line and many of the idea pads in general, but... Overall, not bad. And starting at $749, it's pretty affordable, too, which is, is certainly attractive enough. And as configured here, just about the way I would like to buy it, with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig drive for knife storage for some multimedia files, $999 from Lenovo Direct. So that's the Yoga 11S. It's available now starting at $749. Again, as configured, this one is $999. It's a tablet. It's a notebook. It does yoga. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.